everybody, I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about bronchodilators. So, let's get into it. So the first group of bronchodilators we're going to be talking about are beta-selective adrenergic agonists. So, these are like the big ones, probably the ones you've heard of. So what do they do? They activate beta-2 receptors in the lungs. And remember, you can remember there's two lungs, so that's how you know it's the beta-2 receptors. They relieve bronchiospasms, inhibit histamine, and decrease ciliary motility. So if you remember the little hairs, right? We need those, so we want them to be mobile. We don't want them to be stiff and hard. So that's what they do. The two big ones, albuterol and salmeterol. So some distinctive things. Albuterol can be both inhaled or oral. The inhaled version is meant for like short term, it's short acting, and then the oral is long acting. And it is most typically used during acute asthma attacks. Salmeterol is an inhaled and it is long acting, so like 12 hours. It is used to prevent asthma attacks and is typically used with a glucocorticoid. So if your patient is on salmeterol and a glucocorticoid, what you're going to do is they're going to take this one, the bronchodilator, first, because it's going to help open up those airways. Then they're going to take the glucocorticoid second, usually you have them wait like a minute in between, and that's going to help the glucocorticoid absorb better. So that's important patient teaching. If they're going to be on both of these meds, you want them to take it in order. Some side effects that both of these meds could have. They could cause tremors, anxiety, convulsions, tachycardia, and headache. The most common side effects are really tremors and tachycardia. A lot of people, especially if this is their first time having these meds, will report like, oh my god, I feel like my heart is racing. Okay, or they'll start noticing little tremors. So that does happen. So nursing interventions, if they're in the hospital and we're taking care of a patient on this med, we want to make sure that we're checking their vitals and assessing their respiratory status. And we do need to use this with caution for patients who are taking MAOIs or tricyclic antidepressants. Let's talk about another group of bronchodilators. Now let's talk about xanthines. Sometimes you will see it written like this, okay, xanthines, and then sometimes you will see with the methyl in front of it. So just so you know that's the same thing. So the big one for this is theophylline. So this is used for long-term control of asthma or COPD. It works by relaxing the bronchial smooth muscles, causing them to dilate. So hence the name bronchiodilators, right? It is given either PO or can be given IV in certain emergencies. This medication is very rarely used these days because of all of the complications and the side effects. So the most basic side effects are the things we expect like headache, anxiety, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and insomnia. The scary stuff, what we worry about with this med in particular is toxicity. So the normal range is 5 to 15. Toxicity is anything greater than 20. So what happens to the patients if they get toxic? They can have dysrhythmias and seizures. And they could die from these. So it's important that we don't let this happen. What happens if they do? Let's say we draw their lab values and they are toxic. We're going to give them activated charcoal. Well, first we're going to stop the bed. We're not going to discontinue the med, they're not getting it anymore. Um, but then we'll give them activated charcoal to decrease absorption. We might want to give lidocaine for the dysrhythmia or diazepam for the seizures. So this is kind of a scary med, something, you know, a little bit serious, which is why we don't use it very often. Some important patient teaching for this med, they need to have regular blood draws. We need to know that it's in that therapeutic range. They should avoid caffeine because it can increase the levels, as can the medications phenobarbital and rifampin. And then monitor when this patient is also taking antibiotics because antibiotics can decrease the levels and then it's not therapeutic, right? So just some important patient teaching for theophylline. 
last one we're going to talk about are inhaled anticholinergics. The big one here is ipotropium. So the root is inhalation, which makes sense, right? It's inhaled. It is used typically for COPD or rhinitis, rarely used in asthma patients. It blocks muscarinic acetylcholine receptors of the bronchi, which causes bronchodilation. And just a little A and P if you don't remember. So what these do is they cause constriction. That's their job is to cause constriction. So if they're being blocked from doing their job and constricting, then dilation is going to happen. So that's why this is a bronchodilator. Some side effects. This one has the best side effects of all of them. It's just dry mouth, right? That's pretty common, treatable, not a big deal. So the big side effect of this, dry mouth. What can we do? We can tell the patients to increase their fluids, suck on hard candies, and to rinse their mouth after using. Kind of the big special thing about this one is that it's contraindicated in people who have peanut allergies, and that has to do with how this medication is produced. So that's kind of a big deal. If your patient does have a peanut allergy, they should not be using this medication. So that was my video on bronchodilators. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.